Hi, I'm Shelly Young, owner of The Chopping Block, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a flourless chocolate cake. Uh, this is right up my alley. There's just a few ingredients to it. Uh, it does take some technique, but the steps are um, simple and few, so I like that about it. Uh, the first thing I want to do in my flourless chocolate cake is have a good chocolate. I'm using a semi-sweet today, but a nice dark chocolate would be great when you pick out your chocolate pick out a chocolate that has a lot of chocolate in it because that's the main ingredient in here. Uh, I've got two sticks of unsalted butter here. They could be cold room temperature, however it is. And I'm going to melt that over uh, a water bath. So I have a saucepan with enough water in it um, that it's going to release steam up and melt the chocolate but not touch the chocolate. So I just take a heat proof bowl, put this right on top, and let that steam gradually melt the chocolate. Uh, the next part is preparing the eggs. That's really one of the secrets to this recipe. I have eight nice cold eggs. These came right out of the refrigerator. That's really key. Uh, they're more stable uh, and whip a higher volume when they're cold. Uh, I'm going to take my eggs and one at a time I'm going to crack them. That just helps me to Make sure I don't get any shell in there. Doing this one at a time. Or at least it's easier to get the shell out if I do get some in there. I'm using a sand mixer because this is going to beat for eight to 10 minutes really on a high speed. You're trying to create a lot of volume in these eggs. So the stand mixer is very helpful, but you can do it with a hand mixer. This is the one time I actually prepare my cake pan after I start making the cake and I would do this while my eggs are whipping. I turn them off just so you could hear me. But uh, the cake pan is really important in this recipe. This is a nine inch uh, spring form pan. If you can find an eight inch, they're hard to find. It's even better for this recipe. It creates the perfect volume uh, for the cake pan. What I've done here is I've taken one sheet of parchment paper and I just put it uh, underneath the bottom of the cake pan and then tighten my spring right with the parchment like that. And I don't even cut the parchment. I just do it like this and then I just went around with a scissor and just cut all up all the excess. Doesn't matter. Now I've buttered this on the bottom and on the sides with some unsalted butter. This spring form is a great spring form pan made by La Forme, Kaiser La Forme. But uh, if yours may not be quite as of a tight seal and just to be careful you know just safe anyway I'll use a little foil on the edge so what I do is I grab my foil and just put this up the sides of the pan that because what we're going to do is bake this cake in a water bath and I want to make sure no water gets into the cake the cake pan is going to go inside of a roasting pan I'm going to put a few inches of boiling water in this pan right after I put the cake batter in this pan. Right, it's been about uh, eight minutes on high speed and the eggs look done. This is really a really fluffy egg and that is going to give us the volume in this cake and the structure. Check the chocolate. melted looks good so what we're going to do is I'm going to add about a third of the chocolate at a time and fold that into the egg whites or the eggs um, gently to try not to deflate them little trick is I'll pour the chocolate down the side of the pan versus right on the eggs um, that helps a little bit with the deflation if you're not familiar with folding this is the motion you're basically just taking the versus the aggressive stir which deflates the eggs. We go around like this and lift the eggs. So right along the side of the pan, I'm going to add about a third of the chocolate. Fold that in. You don't have to fold it in where it's completely combined. Just get the, get it started. So I've got the egg whites and the cho chocolate combined. It's still really airy and fluffy. It has deflated a lot, 
but I want to add quickly now because I don't want it to deflate just by waiting around and not being ready. So into the cake pan it goes. Look at that. We're gonna, we want to make sure you have your hot water ready to go. I'm going to pour that in around the outside of the cake. This looks great. You can use cold water in uh, water baths as well, but I prefer to use hot. Then I don't have to have it heat up in the oven. It's going to change your baking time, so don't mess around with it in this recipe. Use boiling hot water. Here's the, here's the trick. This is going to go in the oven at 310 degrees. We're going to cook it for 22 to 25 minutes. We're going to watch it like a hawk around 22. We're actually going to take the temperature, internal temperature of this cake. It should be 140 degrees when it's done. So it's been 22 minutes. I want to check the flourless chocolate cake. Um, taking the temperature here. You know, there's nothing about this cake that would really indicate that it is done. It is kind of jiggly in the pan. It, uh, the meat thermometer, when you stick that in, is going to come out where there's still, it's still wet. Uh, so the thermometer is really key here. So 140 degrees, it looks like it's done. Let's take it out. So my chocolate cake has been in the refrigerator for eight hours. You want to leave these in the refrigerator at least eight hours after they come out of the oven. I also like to let them get a little closer to room temperature before I put them in the refrigerator so they don't get a lot of condensation uh, on the surface of the cake. Now this cake needs to set up for at least hour, eight hours or chill for at least eight hours because um, it sets up when it chills. If you try to cut it before that, it will tend to be kind of runny. The nice thing about this cake is it lasts for days, so it's just as delicious three days from now. So if you're having a party, it works really well to make ahead. I'm going to take this spring form top off and I'm going to do a little bit of a powdered sugar garnish just a little bit. I don't like too much powdered sugar personally because when you go to eat it sometimes it gets kind of caught in your throat. So I'm just going to do a little bit on the total cake. I wanted to show you how to cut this. I take a little glass of hot water and put a knife in there. It'll cut a lot easier that way. I cut the whole cake in half. Okay, see all that? Get myself a nice wet towel to wipe that off. Cut your cake in half again, in case you didn't know how to cut a cake and get it in the right si same size pieces. Cut the whole thing in half, cut the whole thing in half again. Just keep cutting the sections in half. Here, I'm going to pull out a nice piece. Look at that, how beautiful that is. I'm going to give it just a little bit more powdered sugar. A few fresh raspberries for a garnish. Nice raspberry sauce or strawberry sauce would be nice too. And that's how you make flourless chocolate cake.